I was in high school, one of my favorite bands was The White Stripes. I still love them, of course, but back then I'd never seen a band like them before. Their unified color aesthetic, their mix of tender folk songs and guitar-driven rock masterpieces. Every day on the way to school, I would play their albums over and over again. I just couldn't get enough of them. And then one day when watching Fuse, which was basically MTV after MTV stopped being music television, there was a little video for this song. The video was directed by a French filmmaker named Michel Gondry. You may know him from the film Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. He has directed five music videos for The White Stripes, this being one of three that I'm going to cover in this video. Jack White has always been a fan of motifs in his music, from redheaded girls to the number three to the concept of ghosts. This idea seems to be represented in the music video, as old memories are projected onto this house as Jack walks through it, empty and falling apart. The technique is really simple and pretty self-explanatory, but it's a really creative way of showing multiple images from different sequences within the same shot, all done in camera. Instead of using some sort of overlay effect, they filmed all of the scenes in the house and then placed a projector wherever the camera originally stood, projecting the images from the same perspective they were photographed from. We're all familiar with how projectors work and what their most common function is, so I think to use it in this way is really clever and creates this amazing effect that gives a feeling of emptiness and loneliness in the absence of the energy once present in the house. Reflected in the line, I didn't feel so bad till the sun went down, then I come home, no one to wrap my arms around. It's easy when shooting a music video to just film a band playing their instruments from different angles and then cut it all together, but it takes a lot more creativity to put something like this together that tells a story, one that fits the mood of the song presented, which this video does perfectly. The next video I wanted to look at is for the song Fell in Love with a Girl, also featured on the album White Blood Cells. Probably one of the most iconic music videos ever filmed using something almost every one of us is familiar with, Legos. Again, a really simple idea, but executed with great care and precision to sell the effect. About 50% of the video was real stop-motion animation using Lego bricks, and the other 50% was shot in camera and then made to look like Legos using computers. A similar effect can be achieved in After Effects using what's called Mosaic. While I'm not sure what program they used for the actual video, Mosaic pretty much accomplishes the same technique. So for the half that was done in computers, this effect was applied directly to the footage with some tweaking to make the squares look like Lego bricks. And in the half done with stop motion, it was used for reference, so the animators knew where to place each brick when filming. While we've probably all seen some form of stop motion animation using Legos before, I've never seen anything else quite like this video. It's funny, most directors would have been satisfied just using the raw camera footage, but that's what makes Gondry special. He wants to take that next step, which is what makes the video so memorable. And it really shows off the power of his imagination, which I think comes into full effect in the music video for The Denial Twist. If you think that a kiss is on the lips, come on. Featured on my personal favorite album of the White Stripes career, Get Behind Me Satan, it has one of the most creative ideas I've ever seen in a music video. I remember watching this as a teenager and just being completely mystified by the technique. My first guess was just a creative use of a green screen, but they do give you a little glimpse as to how it was done at the end of the video. So basically, when using a program like After Effects, there's a scale option, which at default is set to uniform scale, represented by this little chain link symbol. Meaning that when scaling an item up or down, the proportions stay the same, making the image just bigger or smaller as you drag the mouse. When unchecking the uniform scale option, you can manipulate the scale of the X and Y axes separate from one another. Normally this isn't what you want, as it does create a warped image, but depending on the effect you're trying to achieve, it can be a really useful tool to manipulate. This is the underlying effect present throughout the video. The sets and props were created to have a warped look that would later be corrected by squeezing the video until those same sets and props were at normal looking proportions. To give you an idea, here's what it would look like without the compression. So again, a very simple idea, just playing around with proportions, but by manipulating it in interesting ways and filming it all in one take, it gives it a one-of-a-kind feel that puts it at or very near the top of my list of favorite music videos. These sorts of tools aren't hard to come by. I mean, obviously the elaborate set and props of the Denial Twist probably cost a fair bit, 
but you could achieve a similar effect with cardboard if you felt like it. And that's what I love about the work of Michel Gondry. It has this immediate feeling of accessibility that's lacking in a lot of major films or music videos where you can see the millions of dollars that went into it. A lot of the techniques employed by Gondry are simple in nature, which means they can be accomplished by even novice filmmakers who have that spark of creativity. Something like forced perspective, for example, can either be used to make a child-sized Jim Carrey playing under a table, or it can make a hobbit-sized Elijah Wood sharing a cup of tea with Ian McKellen. And while these are some costly examples, these ideas really just rely on creating illusions based on camera placement, which can be done in many different ways without costing a penny. Honestly, I think the work of Michel Gondry should be required learning for anyone looking to get into filmmaking that involves anything more than just filming actors talk to each other. Besides, there's a fun to challenging yourself by setting limitations, something Jack White holds as his mantra. It's almost like a concept of minimalism, right? But I looked at it as a way of limiting myself so that I could create more things, create more songs, because I'm so boxed in, my brain is forced to work with the tools that are at hand. There is something to that. Comfort kills, can kill an artistic impulse. You have to, um, I mean, yeah, what, 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 what good can come from comfort? I mean, it's not going to be art, you know? That line has really stuck with me. What good can come from comfort? Maybe some of you didn't like The Revenant, but you can't deny the power of its photography because it's not faked. They're not on a cozy, warm soundstage playing pretend. They're in the elements, dealing with extreme cold and wet, and I think the audience feels that. It's the same reason why Apocalypse Now works so well, and frankly, I think is what's missing from The Hobbit films. Obviously, they expanded the book way too much. It could have worked as one three-hour movie just fine, but really, what's missing for me is that feeling, because all too often, they're not on location, they're on set. They're not in the elements, they're in a cozy, warm soundstage, and an audience tends to notice the lack of authenticity, whether they can put their finger on it or not. I'm realizing now this video kind of went on a tangent, but I think those concepts are connected. As an artist, you have to push yourself. Don't be satisfied with the raw camera footage. Go and turn it into Legos. Learn techniques that other filmmakers are using, but don't copy them. Employ them in your own unique way. Don't be afraid to work within limitations. See it as a challenge and you'll never know what might come from it. Who knows, maybe you'll make the next indie hit like Clerks or The Blair Witch Project, or maybe you'll have the next massively popular sitcom like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The point is that sometimes the greatest art can come from the simplest of ideas. Don't be intimidated by the monumental price tag of big Hollywood films. There will always be a space for low-budget films to break through. And now that we live in a time with places like YouTube or Vimeo, there has never been a better time. The biggest challenge you'll have is just getting people to watch, but that's a topic I'm struggling with myself, so I'll get back to you on that one. But go out, get creative, have fun, and you might surprise yourself. Thank you for watching my video. If you'd like to help me make more and better videos, you can head over to Patreon and pledge to basically leave a tip every time I upload. You can give a dollar or ten dollars, whatever you want, you can set a monthly maximum so you don't go over budget. It really helps the channel out, especially now that ads have really become unreliable, even for big channels. So a huge thank you to everyone currently supporting me that way. Every channel says it, but it is true. It does really, really help. I also wanted to thank everyone who has and continues to support this channel in other ways. Anyone who's ever commented on or liked or shared a video, and to everyone who has subscribed, there are now over 10,000 of you, and I'm honestly having a tough time wrapping my head around that. But thank you to everyone who has helped this channel get to where it is. I would have stopped a long time ago without all of the incredible support you have given me. So with that, I'm thinking of doing a Q&A video, so if anyone is interested in seeing that, then go ahead and leave a comment with any question you might have for me. I'll do my best to get to everyone's, if not in the video, at least as a response in the comments. In this episode, I would like to feature another channel like I did last time with Beyond the Frame in my It's Always Sunny video. Entertain the Elk is another up-and-coming video essay channel. He's been getting a lot of traction lately, so I wouldn't be surprised if you've already heard of him, but he makes great videos about all sorts of different topics related to the visual arts, and you should definitely check him out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.